Good evening to everybody. Thanks for clicking on to Wednesday, the 3rd of September edition of Vogan's European Outlook. We do have a lot of wet weather, a lot of cloud cover and cool temperatures as well compared to recent days. And we've got the, a series of low pressure that will be continuing to drive in off the Atlantic over the next day, uh, really the next couple of weeks or so. But uh, I hope you're enjoying what you're seeing here in the channel. Content seven days a week. The live stream will be back this upcoming Sunday at 4 p.m. Tropical Outlook on Saturday. And uh, in that uh, global weather report live, we'll be looking back at the summer in terms of uh, Europe as well as the Northern Hemisphere. Warmest on record for UK, Ireland, Korea, China, Japan. Uh, so we'll be looking at uh, that in a bit of detail. But you can see here, this is the latest visible satellite imagery showing one system moving northeastwards towards Scandinavia, bringing plenty of wet weather. We've got yellow warnings out. We've got uh, some localised flooding in areas of the country. And uh, then we've got this little next feature, this little curl here at the base of the trough that will be swinging in in the wake of this departing area of low pressure and then we're just going to continue to see this uh, wet weather moving through over the next day we while we are going to see breaks in between that will provide some decent sunshine upcoming weekend back half the weekend coming up we'll see something a little bit warmer but you can see here we're clinging on to low 20s in the south east uh, while we've got the mid-teens in the northwest this afternoon looking at the temperatures across the continent then you can see here that we still hold on to some residual summer warmth across Iberia and uh, into the Balkans, Greece, Turkey, and uh, reasonably warm conditions for early September across central areas. Uh, something a little bit cooler the further north you go over Scandinavia. But you can see here off the latest uh, ECMWF, we've got uh, basically just this conga line of low pressure moving in. You can see that uh, this feature, as we've through the weekend it comes up against the resistance of higher pressure to the east that is going to generate the uh, some warmer air to come northwards here frontal systems will be moving through there is a little bit of uncertainty about the time of that but the uh, generally speaking this is going to be a, a very low pressure dominated pattern right the way through the middle portions of the month here you can just see one system after another piling in something we've not really seen for quite some months uh, in a more persistent fashion. This will be obviously welcome news for many. Look at this here, just one after another, uh, developing and then right in that boundary here. You can see the total precipitation amounts through Friday the 19th of September. West facing areas are always going to be wet, but you can see here parts of Tunisia in the northeast day of Algeria, across the Med Sea into the Alpine region, North Italy, parts of uh, Norway in particular, and then west-facing portions of Ireland and the UK, we're going to see some significant amounts of rain. But interesting, that amount of rain here down across uh, parts of northern Africa, keeping an eye on that going forward. Looking at uh, the up-close view of the same chart, looking at the total accumulation of rainfall, and uh, we are seeing west-facing areas picking up uh, a decent amount of rain. Again, southeast eastern areas of the UK, it would be good to see more in the way of rain. Because if we look at this graphic here, this is a precipitation anomaly of the CPC gauge 0 0.5 for the last 120 days. You can see here significant anomalies uh, away from the northeast of uh, the northwest of England, southwest Scotland and much of Ireland. We've got some very significant deficits of rainfall across the bulk of Scotland, England, Wales, into France very dry conditions and then into the belgium netherlands and germany region the balkan region as well big rains across north italy south side of the alps and around the baltic states here as can be seen interesting though i want to draw your attention to the cool start say, to autumn across the north america particularly the upper midwest and the great lakes here we've got the, a significant chill to speak about and could even see some flakes flying across parts of northern Wisconsin and, uh, and and Minnesota over the next wee while. But it's what this kind of could do to the jet that is going to be important. And this may drive a more low pressure dominated pattern. Also, it could actually try to reintroduce higher pressure over Western Europe as well. So equally, there is a lot of complicating factors to consider. Very warm waters surrounding the UK and Ireland at this time of the year can have impact on the atmosphere as well, temperature as well. 
We've seen, obviously, a very warm summer. A lot of the reasons for that has been the persistency of the heat rather than the extremity of the heat. Yes, we've had four heat waves through meteorological summer, but it's the persistency of that warm days, but also warm nights. And that warm water surrounding the UK and Ireland has helped elevate the temperatures overnight, and that has played a significant role. But I want to draw your attention to the MJO, because when you've got a cold pool descending into the eastern side of the United States, so we've got a big heat rate, uh, wave going Pacific Northwest, but especially up through British Columbia, we've seen temperatures into the, the low 40s. Record breaking for British Columbia, also a, a record high for September for Canada as well, 41 Celsius at Lytton in British Columbia. So while you've got this big ridge of high pressure over Western Canada, you've got the trough and colder air dropping south into the Midwest and the eastern side of the United States. Like I say, this is increasing the temperature difference across the eastern North America. But in combination with this upward motion over the Indian Ocean, this is a phase two, three of the MJO. Uh, and when you look at this correlation from Paul Rundy's page, phase two, three of the MJO at this time of the year generally constitutes a, a negative over UK, Ireland, and the Northeast uh, uh, Atlantic here. And if we look at the jet stream, in combination with that MJO, the upward motion of the Indian Ocean, the ridge over the North Pacific extending up into northwestern Canada, generating that heat wave conditions in British Columbia and points uh, over western Canada, northwestern United States. We've got the trough over the eastern side of North America. And then that increases the jet strength over the Atlantic, uh, possibly a long-winded way to uh, suggest that we're, we're going to continue to see this powerful jet uh, stretch across the Atlantic and into Europe and essentially throwing one system after another across the Atlantic and into the UK. Yes, we may see higher pressure building north, then it's replaced by the next area of low pressure coming in off the Atlantic and we may see this kind of flexing back and forth between ridge and trough. But you can see it's a, very much a, a neutral to positive NAO signal here. When you've got that MGO in that day, position over the Indian Ocean and the trough over eastern North America, it essentially just reinforces this low pressure dominated pattern. And remember, if you look back to my forecast for September, I did allude to the fact that towards the middle month, second half of the month, more in the way of region potentially, that all remains still to be seen um, in terms of the overall set up here so this is the upcoming temperature anomalies across north america for the next seven days here this is for europe you can see a largely warmer than average europe with the exceptions of western iberia and northern and western uk ireland northern ireland below average in terms of temperature anomalies and in terms of precipitation anomalies you can see here over the next seven days wetter than average for the most part at least anyway. In terms of a pressure pattern over the next seven days, we're firmly entrenched in low pressure. This is surface uh, pressure of the GFS extended. Continue to play through. And you can see here that we've got generally that area of low pressure lifting a little bit further north in the eight to 15 day period, which is the 10th through the 17th of September. And you can see here that we've got this more interesting look, trophiness over Scandinavia, region maybe more up out towards the Atlantic and, and northwards here. That's interesting to see here. Let's look at the uh, temperature anomalies. Remember, we really need to see a sustained period of wet weather to break this cycle of dryness across our part of the world here. Um, but this is interesting here, the day 16th through the 23rd. This is the uh, 18th through the 25th of September. With that trough over Scandinavia, ridge more over the North Atlantic, you've got a colder than average signal across the UK and Ireland here. So just things that I'm trying to show you, the bigger picture, why we've got the pattern that we've got at the moment here. Um, certainly interesting times and uh, we'll continue to start to look more and more at winter as well. So stay tuned, like and subscribe and I'll see you next time with more. Bye for now.